Hello, this is Vern, and on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how to understand, how to decipher if you can trust a man. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to your great life to space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart centered, and successful women how you can attract the kind of man you want and step into the relationship that you've craved as a result of being the most alive and feminine version of you, no need for manipulation or gimmicks or crazy techniques. Now, this question, can I trust a man? How do I know if I trust him? Is he trustworthy? Has been asked by many, many women throughout the years. And I want to create a framework today that will enable you to have more data points through which you can evaluate how close to the level of trust that you need to move forward in your relationship you have with the man that you're with or with the man who's attempting to date you at the moment, the man who's pursuing you. The first thing I'll say is that there's a scale in the gamma of whether you trust someone or not. And that scale goes somewhere from I trust everyone blindly, which gets you into trouble, and I trust no one uh, for no reason, and, uh, and that gets you into trouble, meaning because you stay single. You, you never connect with anyone. On one level of the scale, you get messed with and you get hurt because you have no criteria to actually put people away or to evaluate guys. On the other one, you just evaluate no one. So if you're at the scale right now where you're more close to not trusting any man, I will say to you that at the level of I don't trust any man, that direct representation of that is I don't trust in myself. I don't trust in my intuition. I don't trust in my skills to evaluate men. Men, I don't trust in my ability to set boundaries. So just understand right now that the closer you are to not trusting men right now, the more you need to work on understanding what men do, how men think, and how to express what you want and set boundaries. Now, the first key to allow yourself to know if a man is trustworthy, and you might hate me for saying this, and it's kind of obvious, but for most people who feel emotionally attached to someone or chemically attached to someone, it's not necessarily as obvious as, as obvious is time. Time is king. There is no freaking substitute for time. Why? Because the more time you have to know someone, the more specific, real, actionable, on the ground data points you have through which you can evaluate that human being and know if actions, thoughts, feelings, and words resonate and are aligned. <laughs> the less time you have to evaluate someone, the more you have to step into something called projection. There's nothing wrong with projection. We have to do it at times in order to progress, in order to live. But if you go into deep, deep projection, the chances that you might get hurt enhance exponentially. So the first one is time. Second key that is going to allow you to get to know someone, but also understand if the guy is trustworthy or not, is his presence. What does that mean? How present and conscious he is when he is with you. The more present he is, the quicker you'll be able to recognize what's inside. Why? Because when a guy is present, he's giving you full time, energy, and attention, and you're able to read him better than if he's not being present with you. So again, the, the, the higher his skill of being here with you, offering himself, and not being distracted by other things, not being distracted by other energies, the, the easier it will be for you to do this. Now, let's say the guy is at the beginning not super present. Again, it's going to take more time for you to at least witness specific moments of presence where you know if this is possible or not. Uh, the next key that's going to allow you to evaluate whether a guy is trustworthy or not is, does he know you, right? Is he At the beginning, is he curious and hungry to know you? If he's not curious and hungry to know you, it's going to be hard to trust. It's going to be hard to trust him than if he's hungry to get to know you. Now, the next step from that would be, I mean, does he know you, right? Uh, if a guy knows you, if a guy knows what you want, if a guy knows what you need, then it's easier to relax and trust him than if you have no idea whether he knows. What, because if he doesn't know what you want, the chances that he's going to do something that's going to hurt you, not even knowing that he's hurting you, are higher. So the more he understands what you want, the better chances he has to act in a way that's according to what your needs are, which means you can trust him more. <laughs> Next one is, is he clear on what he wants? Is the man that you're with clear on his vision for the future? 
clear about what he wants in his career, clear about what he wants in his family life, clear on what he wants in this relationship with you. When you connect with a man and you get a chance to understand where he's going, what his goals are for a relationship, what his timeline is for a relationship, whether that's perhaps something long-term, marriage, children, if that's what you're looking for, the clearer you are in terms of what he wants, the more you can relax and start the process of trusting him. The less you know about what he wants, the more ambiguous he is, the more confused he is, the less you can trust him. How can you trust a guy who doesn't know where he's going? The chance that he's going to turn around the next day and go to a different direction, different planet exists. So it's going to be a lot less likely that you can trust someone who doesn't have a strong sense of direction. A sense of direction in a man is going to be incredibly important in your ability to relax and trust him more. Does he express his needs? Is he the kind of guy who can state what he wants and what he needs? Why is this important? If he doesn't state what he wants and what he needs, then you don't know what you need to do in order to connect with him. You don't know what you need to do in order to grow the relationship with him. You don't know what you need to do in order to understand him and know that he's happy, fulfilled. If he keeps it all to himself, it's going to be harder for you to trust the man. Why? Because there's no data points through which you can evaluate him. The next point is uh, obvious for some, but I'll, I'll say it right out. Do you express your needs? Now, why would that be important? Because if you don't express your needs, then he doesn't know what he needs to do to win. If you don't express, I don't like it when you do this, or I prefer it when you do it this way, then he's going to do things randomly, trying to hit this target in the dark, not hitting it most of the time, which means, how can you trust that? How can you trust that this guy can create a relationship that's fulfilling if he doesn't know what he's doing, but he doesn't know what he's doing because you're not expressing your needs? And I know at the beginning of the relationship, it's going to be, it's going to start gradual and you're going to start starting stating preferences. The more you go in to a relationship with him, the more you need to commit both of you to expressing what you want and what you need and not be ambiguous about it, but be very specific about it. Does he follow through with his word? Is he a man who says, I'm going to do this and commits to it and does it? Or does he say, I'm going to do this and then forgets about it? The more consistency there is between words and actions, especially words and actions it relates to you, the clearer the understanding that you can predict the future based on past behavior. It's not a guarantee, but there's a trend, right? You see one, three, five, seven, nine, you get the picture. If you see one, 17, three, four, like you don't know how to randomly create what's gonna come next. So it's important for you to recognize through time that when a guy says, I'm gonna be there at five, he's there at five. If he's not there at 5, that he messages you and says, you know what, I can't be there at 5, I'll be there at 5.30. But the more, and it starts with little things like that, like punctuality, like uh, expressing things that will happen in the future and then doing them without you having to remind him about the whole thing. The more he's self-reliant on his own skills to take action on the things he's promised to you, to others, the more you can gauge his center of integrity and the easier chance you have in evaluating whether he can do it or not. How does he act in times of stress? Now, great times, happy times, party times, he's having fun, he's in a great mood, he's proactive, he's generous, he's kind. That's all fine. When shit hits the fan, when times become challenging, when you are under stress, when he's under stress, when something unexpected happens, how the hell does he react? Why is it important for you to go through some times of stress with him in order to be able to trust him more? Because if you know that he can handle difficult situations and is still around, is still pursuing you, is still of the mindset that he wants to continue in this relationship, the more you can again predict that when shit happens in the future, and it will, that he'll be there around instead of running away. The more he's the type of guy that something happens, he disappears for three days, four days, five days. The more he gets angry at you and he establishes the ice code or something where you message him and he basically ignores you. The more type, the more situations happen of that nature, the less likely it is that you can trust him. The more he can stand firm, stand grounded in times of stress, st stand responsible, stand proactive, stand um, taking action, the more you can feel relaxed and trust him. And the last one is simple, but I think it's also important to consider. And that, it, that has to do with honesty. 
right? When this guy, uh, th the next one has to do with, do you see him being honest? And do you see him being, yeah, do you see him being honest? Does he lie to you? Does he lie to others? In small ways, right? Does he, does he come up with small lies in times where he really doesn't need to come up with small lies? The more you can see that the guy is being honest, he's sharing a story about something that happened when you were with him. Is he being truthful to the story? Is he aggrandizing himself in the story? Is he coming up with new things that didn't happen just to make create more spice? The more he can be close to reality with you and with others, the more you can trust him. Hope these ideas, these principles, allow you to have a better way of evaluating how much you can trust a guy and how much you can open your heart and relax and let him take the lead. If this is useful, and helpful to you, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. On the first link in the description of this video, click on that link. It's going to take you to a page that allows you to sign up for a free class that will show you step by step what you can do right now to step into the most powerful relationship if you're single, how to create more attraction, and how to stop wasting time with men who aren't available. All you do, as I said, is click on the first link in the description, enter your name and email, and you'll be redirected to that class right away. If you enjoy this, please click like or thumbs up on this video and subscribe. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.